So welcome back. Um, this is video number five. So in this video and also the next video, you will learn how to check and analyze results. So that will later on help in the process of calibrating the network. In this video, we focus um, on certain results like convergence, the visualization, uh, the path of the assignment, and how to check results using uh, some of the graphical procedures. In the next video, we will look at results for certain network objects and also at travel times. So after you have run the assignment, um, it is probably nice to have a look at the um, simulation the visualization of the simulation and there is a dedicated view the spa visualization and once you have opened that you can just play the recording um, you might need to choose a faster speed in order to see something and maybe um, i will switch off the background map so you have a clearer view what's going on in the network. So what you see here is basically the vehicle moving through the network. The vehicles are colored by their speed. You will see that uh, um, in front of the signals and you also see um, the colors of the signals changing. Um, yeah, in this um, recording, you can um, jump forth or back if that is required. You can always jump to a beginning of uh, an analyzed time intervals or any point in time you would like to see. If you have a dedicated point in time where you have um, de detected something, you can also uh, define the time here. So let's assume it's like that. Then you can jump there, um, move in and go back and forth in order to investigate certain um, yeah, grid locks, congestion, queues in the network. So um, the next thing I would like to focus on is convergence. Um, once you have run the assignment, there's always a result message. So in that case, it indicates that the assignment has converged after seven iteration and it also tells you the gap. If you would like to have a deeper look, um, there are also statistic lists in Visum, which you can use um, to have a look at the numbers over the iteration. So you check, uh, you choose the simulation based assignment quality data. I will load um, a layout for that list. So what you find here um, are the results um, separated by transport system. But by using that filter, you can also check at the overall numbers, overall transport systems. You have here certain outputs, as you might know from static assignment. Most interesting here is probably the gap and to see if the gap is really improving over the iterations. You can see here the number of simulated vehicles that are the uh, number of vehicles in the mesoscopic simulated area. You can check here if all the vehicles have left the network or if there are still vehicles stuck in the macro area. So that would be indicated here by this column. And you have here some overall statistics about the total travel time, total miles per hour in the network. Um, and that is available for the entire network, but also for the simulation only. So that are certainly some useful statistics. Um, you can open several of these lists and I would like to show you a different view on that list. 
on that list. Um, you can also here um, show the gaps of the different analyzed time intervals. And if you color code them, that gives quite a nice view of how the convergent has convergent has improved over the iterations and over time. So that color coding is quite useful. And that is also something you can copy from this list, for example, to the other list. So for example, using that for these two lists. So that is also quite useful so that you can reuse, reuse something you have already defined. Um, so that are the results um, for convergence. And next I would like to focus on path. In Visum, you can store the path of the assignment or it is stored in the version file. And you can open that through a path list. Also here, I have a prepared um, layout for that list. So you can first see here the number of overall paths uh, that is separated by demand segment. So you have one for truck and one for car. So of course, you will not be able to move through all these paths, but sometimes it might be useful to check these paths. So they are also uh, synchronized with the network. And because of the huge number, it is also sometimes useful if you can use here filter settings. So let's assume now we would like to filter paths that are within the mesoscopically simulated area. In that case, we would um, also or again do an intersect op operation for zones, so indicate zones that are located in this area, and then filter paths where both the destination and the origin zones are located within the area. So to do so, we can first reuse our intersect operation. Just uh, change the links uh, by zones, then we need to define a new target attribute, for example, in meso area. And then again, we can use the maximum share as a source attribute of one, just to indicate the zones that are located within the territory. And then we will execute um, the procedure. And based on the um, setting of that value, we can now define a filter um, that requires uh, from zone, an attribute from the from zone um, in meso area. The value must be one. And then we can duplicate that and change that to two zone. So now we have defined the filter and now we are able to reduce or to use the filter settings in the pass list. Again, that are still quite a huge number, but it might help um, to get down to some um, things um, which you need to check in the network. Um, the results of the simulation-based assignment can be also used in flow bundles. Maybe I switch off the legend um, and zoom in here in the central business district. So you can, for example, run a flow bundle operation uh, for this link. So that is something you can do also for static assignments. But here you have also, uh, besides the 
um, selection of demand segments, the option to define uh, temporal restrictions. So for example, uh, you would like to filter all the trips that are entering uh, this link between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. So you run the um, flow bundle calculation and also the result of this calculation can be used um, in the path list. Um, for example, if you change here to flow bundle routes. So that way you can also analyze paths um, using temporal conditions within the flow bundle calculation. Um, also for the um, shortest path search, um, you can use um, the departure time. Maybe I will switch off the link paths. So in order to um, check some of the calculation or some of the link attributes or some of the results, you might run the shortest path search. You can do that um, using nodes. So for example, you can choose a node here uh, from there. And now you have here the experienced um, or the shortest path based on the experienced travel time with a departure time of 8 o'clock. So if you were, for example, to change that to 7 o'clock, Um, it might be a different route because of the departure time and because of the uh, changes over time in the network. Also here you have a list um, PRT shortest path search and for certain attributes then you can check um, how the travel time in the unloaded network uh, changes for a certain departure time. So that might be also quite a useful feature to see where and why vehicle change their path over, over time, so during the assignment. Um, yeah. Um, and with this, I would like to finish this video. In the next video, we will again focus on results, but then on specific results of network objects and the evaluation of travel times for certain parts in the network.